Here we're looking at a 2013 Freightliner tractor trailer. Now, the trailer, of course, obviously is separate from the tractor, and it's actually a refrigerated trailer. And actually, it's disconnected and uh, being supported by its um, support so the tractor can drive away. All right, now our engine is actually the, the Detroit Diesel DD15 engine, and it's a uh, 14. Point eight liters and it's an inline six cylinder design let's go ahead and take a look at it okay here we see a 2013 and this is a freight liner and uh, the engine here this is the detroit diesel dd15 this is an inline six cylinder it's uh, uh 14 liters uh, goodly size engine now this is common rail diesel and here we see the common rail and uh, the fuel pressure in the common rail is going to be very high, about 25 to 3700 PSI. And here we see the individual lines going off to the injectors. And the injectors are electrically actuated. And here we see our electrical connector. Now, I do have a high pressure fuel pump, but unlike a, 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 a early style diesel engine, this fuel pump's sole purpose is to simply maintain the correct pressure in the common rail. The quantity of fuel injected is controlled electronically. Now, here I see my fuel filter module. I have a primary fuel filter and a secondary fuel filter. And uh, the, um, the actual high pressure fuel pump is there driven from the back of the engine. Now on this particular vehicle, I have a very sophisticated primary filter and what the operators of the vehicle do is they actually service this filter regularly. All diesel fuel has to flow through this filter. So it's both a fuel filter and water separator and they actually leave the primary and secondary fuel filters there on the engine alone. Now uh, here behind it, this is of course the uh, intake manifold and as we come up here uh, just beyond the intake manifold we see the top of the engine oil filter and on many of these diesels they actually have a cartridge here a filter cartridge but it also contains chemicals this is for our cooling system now as we move across we come here to the after cooler and this is going to cool down the air from the compressor on the turbocharger uh, we want to get it as low as possible obviously but we just simply have atmospheric air flowing through it there on its way to the radiator let's move to the other side of the engine okay here we're looking at the right side of the engine and we have an exhaust gas recirculation system that's trying to reduce oxides of nitrogen peak combustion temperatures and pressures and here we see a exhaust to water cooler to try to bring the temperature of the exhaust gas down and why are we recirculating exhaust gas into the intake manifold or the airstream to the intake manifold we're trying to reduce peak combustion temperatures and pressures the exhaust gas is going to displace area that could have been uh, occupied by oxygen bearing air so uh, they're under moderate engine load so I want to try and reduce those peak temperatures and pressures to reduce the formation of oxides of nitrogen now on many of the diesels that have the uh, selective reduction catalysts and the diesel emissions fluid they all work in harmony there to control those oxides of nitrogen emissions from a trucker's perspective though I'm interested in fuel economy and uh, power and so this guy he's not really my buddy all right dropping below it here we see our turbocharger here we see the inlet coming from the air cleaner and that air cleaner is mounted on top of the engine and uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, using the flow of exhaust gas to drive a turbine and it is uh, connected directly to the compressor wheel and it's going to be drawing in the air and compressing it 
and you'll notice that I don't have any type of wastegate mechanism on this particular vehicle. I'm just going to let that turbocharger do all it can do and raise that manifold pressure as far as it can under a given engine speed and load. And here I have the air discharging from the compressor. They're on its way to the after cooler and it just looks like a big aluminum radiator there in front of the main radiator. Now, obviously air conditioning is important on any vehicle and I can see I have a fairly fresh looking AC compressor. So apparently it's been recently changed and I do have a condenser out here in front. It's not very big. And then the um, um, uh, condensed liquid refrigerant is going to pass through my little receiver dryer here and then head off to my little H-valve block and there to my evaporator there to uh, help control the temperature of the inside of the truck keeping it nice and cool and then here's my return right back to the suction side of the compressor now of course obviously on this truck I have air brakes the air compressor is driven there back by the engine and I actually have a 10 speed manual transmission with a 2 speed uh, uh, um, auxiliary on it so I actually have 10 speeds forward And in driving just the tractor, we normally start off in fourth gear. And then, of course, can skip gears going up and down because obviously there's no load. If you try to go gear to gear, it's very jerky and very uncomfortable and very unnecessary. And then, obviously, with a loaded trailer, especially a heavily loaded trailer on a steep grade, I'd have to go through the whole stack. Well, this is a used truck. It was very reasonably priced. It was purchased in California and driven back here to Richmond, Virginia. And uh, it, obviously the truck doesn't make any money sitting here in the parking lot. And hopefully if everything goes smoothly, it will be back on the road going back and forth between the East Coast and West Coast. Okay, here we see to make the passengers more comfortable there within the truck. We have a air ride suspension on the cab and here we see the shock absorber and here are the two air springs. And in fact actually I got a shock absorber on this side and a shock absorber there on the left side and there we see the two air springs. Now on this particular unit I actually have a two cylinder diesel engine and it's hiding under this cover. and. What it's doing is it's supplying um, uh, auxiliary power, they actually call it an APU unit, and what it's doing is running the air conditioning and also supplying hot water, and this is actually engine coolant, there to the heater core inside the uh, engine compartment. Now, the condenser for the APU is actually up behind the cab and there we see it. There we see the receiver dryer and electric fan and the condensing unit. So what I have is I have a nice effective air conditioning and heating for the cab. So if I'm sitting all night I'm not running the main engine, I'm running this little two cylinder diesel engine and it's drawing its fuel from the main tank and it can just run for days and days and days if it needs to. Now, this particular trailer that came with this truck is a very nice trailer. It's 2008, but it does have a refrigeration unit. So, fully functional, and actually the trailer itself is in excellent condition. Very clean, very little damage, very little wear. Tires are a little worn, but other than that, excellent condition. 